Hey, it's Samantha, and you're listening to The Samantha Sato Show on Palm Beach Radio, the place to be for creating a life more bright, balanced, and beautiful. If you've ever had one of those days where you feel like you're in a blur, just going through the motions of the day, and the next thing you know, it's five o'clock, then today's show is for you. We're going to be talking about creating a morning routine that will set you in motion for a successful day. That's coming up in just a minute. But first, in this week's news that caught my eye, can we just talk about how Martha Stewart and Snoop Dogg are teaming up this fall for a new cooking show called Martha and Snoop's Dinner Party? Pure genius. Who wouldn't want to be invited to that dinner party just for the sheer fact that this dynamic is so off the wall? Snoop, let me know when and where and I'll be there. I'll even bring the brownies, whatever it is that you want. Um, If I were to have a cooking show with any musical artist, it would have to be Drake. I could just see it now. I'd be making my famous apricot rugula recipe. He'd be pouring the manischewitz. It would be the best. What celebrity would you love to cook with and what would you make? Let me know on Twitter at Samantha Sato. Topping the list of stories and things that I am loving this week is Instagram stories. Being that it is so similar to Snapchat This begs the question of whether Instagram will put Snapchat out of business. So unlike Snapchat, Instagram is already a great platform for discovery with users being able to search hashtags and keywords to find new accounts that inspire them. And Instagram's user base is larger than Snapchat's. So now you got me wondering, Snapchat, what's your next move? Personally, I've switched to using Instagram stories so much so that I don't even have a desire to use Snapchat anymore. I love having everything in one place and being able to see who's looking at your stories, I think that's pretty cool. I would love it if other apps followed in these footsteps and started combining more features together like this one. Okay, on a more personal note, I went to the dentist the other day and it got me thinking, why are so many people afraid of going to the dentist? I'll admit it, I don't like going either, but you know, as I get older, I'm realizing just how important it really is. So it actually turned out a whole lot better than I thought. And you know, I think we get anxious around our dentist visits because we know our routine could be better. Anyway, I recently decided to just bite the bullet and purchase a Clarisonic electronic toothbrush. Guys, it is so amazing. I don't even know how I went this long without one. It even has a Bluetooth and its own app that tracks your progress to see if you're brushing well enough. And it even has a timer because apparently you're supposed to brush your teeth for at least two minutes for it to be effective. Pretty cool, right? Yes, so speaking of morning routines, it's now time to jump into this week's main topic. Creating a morning routine that will set you in motion for a successful day. Now, each day we want to feel energized, purposeful, focused, and clear-headed, right? making time for yourself each morning will give you clarity and peace to carry you throughout the day. Because once your day gets going, there's phone calls, driving, coordinating with different kinds of people, projects, stress, you name it. So these following tips will help you to create stability so you're ready for anything that comes your way. You guys ready? Okay. Number one. Find your setting. Very, very important. First thing in the morning, get to a place where you feel really relaxed and comfortable. It might be your bed, your couch, patio, wherever there is a place that gives you peace and comfort. 
So we have a tiki hut outside in my backyard, and I really like to sit on the couch underneath it. I drink my coffee and just, you know, take in the morning air, listening to the birds and the wind. It sounds a little bit cheesy, but it's my peaceful place. So that's what I like to do in the mornings. It's also a place where I feel spaciousness. So wherever it is for you, make sure it's a place where you can spend this quiet, precious time by yourself without any distractions. Number two, unlock your creative flow. Let's just say this one more time. Unlock your creative flow. <laughs> I got this practice from uh, the book, The Artist's Way, and it's a really great resource for creative people, entrepreneurs, and anyone who wants to tap into their creative potential. So the concept here is as soon as you get up, before doing anything else, grab a journal and write down everything that's going on inside of your head. Think of it as like a data dump. Write down everything that comes to mind, your dreams from last night, how you know, you're still not over yesterday's, how yesterday's presentation went, that you forgot to call your mom back, um, that you're pissed off about something. Whatever it is, write it down. So by doing this, you're actually freeing up all of the space that these thoughts hold inside of your brain. This will allow your creative flow to come through. So it's oftentimes just thoughts inside our head, just too much thinking that gives us that frozen feeling. So by unlocking these blocks, you are just allowing more creative energy and ideas to, again, flow through you. This has become so ingrained in my everyday routine that I sometimes spend an hour writing and, you know, sometimes it's only five minutes, but whatever it is, do what you can, but just do something. And, the, you know, the reason is there are just so many distractions and st stimulations really coming from all areas throughout the day, demanding our attention. So... You really, really deserve this. You need to be gentle and you need to be loving with yourself. And, you know, I understand that this might feel a little overwhelming and hard to do at first, but, you know, don't worry about it. Just try one new thing and stick with it. See how it makes you feel. And, you know, my motto always is, if it feels good, keep doing it. All right, <laughs> number three meditate by writing everything down on paper it's it's really good because you're getting it out of your brain so you'll have less anxious thoughts in your head while getting to this next practice meditation is so wonderful now if you've never done this before there are a lot of really great apps out there for beginners one is called headspace where meditation is really just broken down for you in a way that is so easy to digest Spending just 10 or even 15 minutes a day can lower your stress levels. Trust me. <laughs> I sometimes meditate for 45 minutes a day. So everything we're talking about here is to nourish your body, your mind, and soul. If you don't build yourself up, no one else will do it for you. Okay, here's this analogy that I like to use. You know when you're on a plane and the stewardess says in the case of an emergency to put an oxygen mask over, wait, no, to put an oxygen mask over yourself before anyone else. Well, the same goes for everyday life. You can't expect to take care of anyone, love anyone, or even give your all to anything if you're not taking care of yourself first. Remember that. Number four, set your intentions. Now, this is actually one of my favorites. Um, an intention is a self-written description of what you expect out of whatever it is that you are about to go and do. This is really important to incorporate not only into your morning routine, but all throughout the day, in fact. A really great time to set your intentions is actually in the shower. 
So think about what it is that you want to feel and do that day. Now, really be honest with yourself and say whatever it is that you want, such as, I don't know, I intend on getting to work on time or I intend on having a smooth and productive phone call with so-and-so or I intend on having an uplifting conversation with this person. I intend on being helpful today. My favorite thing, absolutely favorite thing about intentions is that you can do them as often as you'd like. Again, I, I told you before, I do them all throughout the day. So setting your intentions for the kind of day that you would like to have puts you in the driver's seat of your own life as opposed to, I don't know, the back seat. Whether you realize it or not, you are a creator and you're here for a purpose that is solely unique to you. When we go about our day without setting intentions for what we want or what we expect, we're basically just observers watching our own life and the situations in it that pass us by. So this creates reactions that are, you know, impulsive and not from a place of our best selves. Being aware of the way that you feel and the way that you want to feel creates a sense of control over your emotions. It also makes you notice little things throughout the day that you would never would have noticed before. When you set a specific intention and go and things actually go well for you, it is the most incredible feeling. So get used to it. Just like any new habit, it is really important to make time to set your intentions. Being aware of the way that you feel and noticing how your day progresses after setting those intentions. It's really just what keeps you in control of you. Another one that I actually did not put on this list but is equally important is gratitude. Gratitude is the easiest and fastest way to feel good right now. So I think I'm actually going to be doing a whole episode on gratitude and the enormous changes that come about just from incorporating it into your everyday life. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much to everyone who listened in to today's episode. I hope you guys found these tips helpful and are feeling inspired to go and create a morning routine that will set you in motion for a successful day. Let me know which one of these was your favorite. And if you have a story to share around this topic, you know I want to hear from you. So let's connect. Go to samanthasato.com and leave a comment below the video. If you liked this episode and want to hear more, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. And I would so appreciate it if you shared it with your friends. For even more fun things related to travel, fashion, and lifestyle, plus some personal insight that I only share on my website, come on over to samanthasato.com. Have a beautiful week, everyone, and I will see you right here next week on Palm Beach Radio.